Hi, uh, Dr. Pelto here. Uh, I want to do a, a deep dive today uh, talking about using a scribe. Um, kind of a little bit of the backstory. I've been in practice since about 2009. And for the last 15 years or so, I really haven't had a scribe. I've been doing all the notes by myself. Uh, we went from using uh, MediNotes to LiTech MD, and currently we use uh, Athena. Uh, in all these times, I've, I've kind of wanted to get the idea of using a scribe. My whole idea behind using a scribe was to save time, but more importantly, to connect more with patients. That was the whole reason. So I wouldn't have to look at the computer all the time. That was a, an area of frustration. And then there's so many details, like doing a dispensing note for DME or doing all the details in the note. And many times it, it wasn't being done, or I might forget something, or I do a few notes with the patient in the treatment room. We did not do uh, dictation. We did directly with computers in each treatment room. So I do have computers in each treatment room, and I've been doing the notes with patients there. Uh, and I and I recently had a couple of experiences I want to talk about. The first one is I had my first scribe for about three to four months, and then my first scribe left, and now I'm training a second scribe. And I want to give you guys some tips. And, and by the way, if you stick around till the end, my biggest tip uh, at the end, I'm going to give you the tips on how to get all my training stuff for scribes. So you don't have to train your own scribe. I can help you kind of train your scribe for you. But uh, let me tell you, the, in terms of scribing, what they tell you is you're going to get a scribe that knows what they're doing. I haven't had scribes that really know well. My first scribe, he was a pharmacist, and I had to train everything. He wasn't a very good typer, which made it kind of a challenge. I think I was a better typer than he was. And he never could figure out kind of Google spell check for my EMR. Uh, but we, once we get all the technical aspects, meaning access to my medical record, uh, access to getting logging in and communicating, well, in our version, we communicate via a cell phone. So there's a cell phone that I have an extra cell phone, and I leave it with the with the the microphone head up in my pocket, and I leave it in my pocket, and then he just listens to me all day uh, as I'm talking with patients, and I may do a, a brief little uh, lowdown after I see a patient and let let them know kind of what's going on with that patient, some specific details that it might might, might not have included. Uh, initially, when we did uh, scribing. I, I logged into what we call, we use Teams. So Teams, the nice thing about Microsoft Teams is it's HIPAA secure. And so my patient, my, my scribe would send me a link and that link I logged into in my main computer. So in my office, I have an office where I mainly was where I spent time training the scribe. And then I have six treatment rooms. And then each of those treatment rooms, I can also log into Teams. And initially I thought I had to download Teams for each of my treatment rooms. You don't, there's a web version that's a lot easier. So in my office, I had the downloadable version, the actual version of Teams open. And then the other ones, I just used the web version. So initially when I was training him, it took me a little bit longer and it was a little bit frustrating, but I would uh, do my notes just as I was in the past. I was doing, but I was talking my scribe through it. So I was saying, okay, now I'm doing this. And, and I was opening up my screen. They could see my screen. I was walking them through and teaching them. And so I would teach them doing it over and over, let's say for a week. So they could see how my flow was, how my patients were, how I was doing the notes. And then they did um, every other note. So I started with really easy notes, like new from old, like routine days. I've had a routine day, they would do the routine notes. And then I would kind of go a little bit more in depth in teaching them how to dispense CAM boots, DME, writing orders for AFOs, writing over for orders for referrals, for um, medications, for... So they do now, they do all my medications, all my referrals, all of my DME, either dispensing or prescribing DME, uh, everything that you can think of this, the scribe can do, and it makes it my job a lot easier. But the challenge is it took me about three months to train that scribe, and then my scribe left. And so that's what I'm dealing with now is training my second scribe, and I, and I, and I, and I don't like to do things multiple times. So now what I'm doing within um, this podiatry practice mastery, I have like a, a scribe training guide. So in there, I have all my templates, I have videos kind of explaining how to do certain notes, and um, I have all this information that's in there, along with all of what I call macros, which is the way I kind of explain things, all of my templates within my medical record, and I'm explaining this to the to the scribe, or I'm explaining it to whoever in the video, and then the scribe can use it and just makes their job a lot easier. The whole question is whether my scribe or your scribe that you're hiring is going to use this. I don't know if they will. It would make their job a lot easier, and I think if I could do it over again, I would have had my scribe give them homework 
to watch all of those videos, read through all of those macros, and then come back to me with, with any questions. Because it would make my it would make it a lot easier. Because on the job is good, or maybe do an on the job and then have them look at all that stuff during the downtime. So that that's that's what I'm at right now. Um, I am uh, training the second scribe. I'm not sure if I'll continue. Uh, I might stop in the future. I might continue to do it. I'm, I'm unsure. Uh, what's the pros and the cons? Like I said, the pro is that I can be with my patients, but if I'm distracted about reviewing my notes with my scribe, it's a little bit challenging. I used to do notes in every treatment room, and now I do notes like five at a time. I come back in my office, we review all five, I make little edits, and hopefully they'll learn, and then I won't have to do those edits again. But I still have to review every five notes or so. But I and I talk, and then we have technology issues, just so you know. So sometimes the the the, the phone dies on me or meaning the, the, it drops the call, it drops the connection. I have bad Wi-Fi in one of my offices. So one office I connect via the app on my phone, the other one I connect via the telephone. So there's different like technological things and they can't really see what I'm doing. I know one of my colleagues, he was a company that he used the Google Glasses so he can see, but I don't have that. So those are kind of my, my, my feedback in terms of training. So if you want to use my stuff to, to train your scribe, uh, go to podiatrypracticemastery.com slash capital E, capital M, capital R, e, a medical, electronic medical record, put your email in there and you can get access uh, to that. I'm also going to, uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to put a link to the, the playlist of my other videos for Athena, because that's the medical record I use currently, but it just explains how to do notes within Athena. And you can use those notes along with that package uh, to help train your scribe to make it a little bit easier, hopefully a little bit a little easier than I've dealt with here. Okay. Hope this was beneficial. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them underneath the video. I'll try to get to them uh, when you when I can, and then also subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Thanks.